Morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Good morning. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I can hear people still coming in there, but we'll get a start because I know you, you've constraints on, on the school side. So my name is Dr. Dara Flannery. I'm from the Kemi Business School, the Department of Economics, the Kemi Business School in the University of Limerick. So uh, this morning, um, uh, myself and Professor Stephen Kinsler will uh, provide this webinar on the research study for Leaving Cert Economics um, uh, from, uh, I suppose, what we can, can hopefully give some advice just from our perspective in terms of from um, our perspective of having uh, uh, numerous years of conducting our own research, independent research. Um, so we're going to break it up into two bits. So I'm going to give the first kind of 20 minutes or so uh, from my perspective, and then Stephen's going to give about 20 minutes or so, and then we'll have Q&A uh, after that. So welcome. I can see here all the people coming in. So it's great to have such, such interest and such um, um, participation in it. Um, so just again to give you just a flavor of kind of the structure here this morning. OK, so we'll try to keep it tight on time and stuff. So as I said, I know you, you're constrained somewhat at the school side in terms of timing and things like that. Um, so just, I suppose, to, to crack into it in terms of from, from my own perspective. Um, what the, when I sat down to look at this, I kind of thought, oh, God, you know, what 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 value or what? What added value or what advice can I give to, to students or, or teachers, you know, here at the coalface and this kind of side of things? So I was kind of thinking about it. And from my perspective, I suppose, like I, I what I've based this on, what I've based, what, what I'm going to present here and kind of the little bits that, that I think might be useful. What I've based it on is basically my own experiences, my own experiences from a couple of different angles. Um, I've been doing research for about 14 years since I kind of started my PhD, um, which seems a long time ago, and then subsequently doing kind of research, a large part of 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 my job and Stephen's job uh, in the university is obviously teaching, but a large part is is doing research. And that's, uh, you know, the, the, the story for that is starting with a blank page, you know, starting a lot of it is starting with a blank page in terms of research and developing research ideas and then seeing how to execute research ideas and then finishing research ideas so you have something tangible at the end, like a, 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 a publication or a report or something like that. So that journey and that that experience is, is, is quite similar to what all the students, all your students are are going to go through or going through at the moment in terms of the leaving cert, you know, starting with somewhat of a blank page. I know you've guidance and things like that and, and themes aim for, but you know, you have your individual line of inquiry. So you have, you know, somewhat of a blank page and, and you know, you're going to go through this process, this kind of research kind of process. So I kind of thought, you know, it's going from my own experience to try and try and pass on anything I think that might be of value to you. And hopefully it will. As well as that, we kind of we supervise students, you know, we supervise students in terms of what's called final year projects in the University of Limerick. So, again, we super, we help guide and advise students who are doing projects like E kind of at a bigger scale, but again, starting a research project from start to finish, you know, kind of seeing that thing through and executing it. As well as that, I teach a module at the master's level about, it's called thesis preparation. So it's kind of research methods kind of module. So again, some of the stuff that I will be saying to you here is actually stuff I say at a postgrad level as well, which which kind of holds I think demonstrates, you know, that, that that the process is ongoing and you're learning all the time in it as well, be it at leaving cert, be it at postgrad, be it at any kind of stage in terms of your education, kind of your journey. OK, and um, just to start off, like I, I think research and doing a research kind of project, it can be quite daunting. Like I'm sure there's a lot of you there at the moment, teachers and students included, you know, you're probably maybe pulling your hair out and kind of thinking, oh, God, what am I doing? You know, I have a blank page. I have something due in about eight weeks or 10 weeks. You know, or, you know, what's going on? Will someone just please tell me what to do? Something like that, you know, that some of you may be experiencing. Um, but there's the positive side, I find. And I experience that as well when I do research and, and kind of trying to guide a project through that I get to those emotions as well a lot of the times. Um, but you know, what I find as well, what I remind myself of, which I think is important to remind yourself as you go through this process as well, is that doing a research project, it's an opportunity, you know, it's an opportunity to explore a topic that is in, of interest to you in greater depth. So it's an opportunity for you to go get data and to do kind of this independent research. It's not something as, as prescriptive as maybe other things that you might do 
across the kind of education system, not just in, in, in kind of leaving surf, but also even in college and other kind of places, you know, it's, it's, it has that bit more independence. So um, I, I think personally, you know, I think that's a good thing, you know, provide you with this opportunity. It's student driven. It's kind of a, a relatively clean slate, you know, so it, it, it's kind of driven by you as the student. I know you get help and guidance from your teacher and stuff as you go along, but, you know, it is quite student driven. It's individual driven. So again, I see that as a positive, you know, you, you, you're your own boss in a way, in a lot of ways in doing this research. So in doing this research project. So um, that's what I, I try to remind myself. It, it, it does get lost, you know, and some I get frustrated. That's what I mean by the last point here. You know, the journey, the research journey from start point to end point, you know, it can be incredibly frustrating in terms of it, it's not it's not linear. It's not a straight line. You know, it's it, it, there can be ups, there can be downs. You can have good days with a research project. You can have bad days with a research project where you feel you get nothing done or you take a step backwards. But I, I think it can be very, very rewarding. At the end of the process, you'll have something, you know, something tangible, a research uh, study, you know, something that you did as an independent kind of bit of research. And, and I find that, that that's quite rewarding when, when it happens for me um, in terms of journal articles, or as I said, or reports or even presentations or things like that that I based upon my research. Um, I, I think that's 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 really, you know, that's really unique in a way. And it's it's really interesting and rewarding. As I said, so don't, you know, the, the message I'm kind of trying to say here initially is, you know, don't don't be surprised if you get frustrated and annoyed about this research kind of thing as you're going through, but 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 stick with it, you know, kind of um, um, because it can be very rewarding. So that's the kind of just, just a message, I suppose, I'd like to give to students in terms of doing research as a whole, you know. Um, in terms of the research process, just uh, we have limited time this morning, so trying to pick out some kind of interesting things I thought would be of value to you in terms of my own experience again, you know. So in choosing your individual line of inquiry, you know, so you have obviously those themes, you know, those, those themes that are indicated to you from, from, from the examination side. You know, it, it, it's a very simple process in a way, just kicking the starting off points, you know, so you have a start point, end point, the starting point, you get these, these kind of themes. For me, the start point I have is always a, a, a blank piece of paper and a pencil and a pen, and I'm jotting down ideas, just brainstorming. Like you have some kind of guidance or scaffolding around it with the with the the the, the themes, and I'll, we'll have a look at one of them in a minute. But you know the, the kind of process in terms of kicking off really starts off with reading and writing down ideas. It, it seems like a very basic thing, but it's 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 very valuable. I find in terms of the research process, try and clean out your your thought process, get that headspace, and and just start reading around things or listening to things. And I have some resources as well that I've, you'll see in a minute that I'll, we'll be able to circle it in terms of where to read you know, and what to listen to to try and generate ideas. But it's that kind of process, just finding the the space, the headspace, I think, you know, to do that is is very valuable as well. You know, starting with a blank page and just jotting down ideas. While you're doing that as well, though, keep a few questions in mind. You know, it, it, I find it helps to guide that process as well, to keep some things in mind and to stop or help you uh, stop going down rabbit holes, to stop going down avenues that uh, will ultimately lead to nothing, you know? So one of the things I try to keep in mind, it doesn't always work for me, mind, but try to keep in mind when I'm doing this, when I'm trying to generate a new research idea or, or think of an angle on research or things like that, and I find that the kind of headspace to look at these things or think about these things, is one of the first things I look at, and this is especially relevant for ye, um, given given the kind of outline of, of what you have to do is does my idea fit with some aspect of economics? So you have to kind of keep that in mind when you're thinking about your ideas, you know, because I've just quoted this quote I have here. OK, it's just the one about apply a relevant economic concept, to the individual line of inquiry, bit, bit wordy. But I've just taken that from the guidance from the department, you know, in, in terms of your your research study, the Lean Star Research Study. But it's something I would tell master's students. It's something I would tell um, find your undergrad students, if it's something I would try to remind myself, if it's something I would tell PhD students, you know, how does this apply to some economic concept? So is it about, you know, the kind of concepts that you're probably learning and still learning across the syllabus now with your teacher in terms of demand and supply? Does it relate to things like externalities? Does it relate to things like efficiency or equity? Does it relate to things like market failures? So how do I bring in some of these concepts and some of the ideas that I want to look at? So I think that's just important, you know, you, we can all have, you know, you can have the greatest idea in the world, but you have to ground it and bring it back to the kind of economic concepts and the economic ideas, um, because ultimately it's an economics project, you know, so 
and, and, and they're going to be looking out for that, I would imagine, you know, in terms of applying these economic concepts. So just try to keep that in mind. It's just it's to help guide that kind of brainstorming. For me, I find helps and, and hopefully, you know, it might help you in terms of your, your thinking around this. Um, a big thing, and I always say this to students, though, is how feasible is my idea? Again, you know, you might have 20 ideas swirling around in your head, OK? But you, to try and narrow them down and to keep you a bit more focused and stop the rabbit hole kind of side of things, I always again say to students, I'll say to you, think about how feasible your idea is. OK, so think about how feasible your idea is. So what I mean by that is, can I get some data to analyse the question at hand? You know, if you have a great idea around something, but it's not feasible, so it's not feasible in the sense you cannot get data to analyse it or it cannot be done in the timeline that you face, because there are certain constraints that you face. There are constraints around time, you know, you have to go constraints around um, uh, data availability. Just, again, try to keep that in mind and guide your process as you go through. Um, just because you have to, you know, you have to be aware or be cognizant of the constraints that you face. There are time constraints, like I said, and there are potential data constraints. So as you're going through that and trying to generate ideas, you have to think to yourself, OK, is this realistic for me to do for this kind of project? If it's not realistic, just move on. It's it's a, that it's that procrastination and waiting and kind of that, that ambiguity around certain projects that causes a lot of stress, I find, for my own research projects and for students' research projects. So kind of having <laughs> those questions in mind can help avoid yeah, those kind of problems, I find, OK? So um, uh, that's they're just some kind of Guidance, I think, just in that initial process, that initial process around the research kind of process um, or the research journey. I know it sounds a bit cliche to call it a journey, you know, like it sounds like a bit like X Factor or those kind of things, you know, the journey that you go through or dancing, uh, strictly dance, strictly come dancing, whatever it is, you know, that they always talk about the journey. But it, but it is a bit, you know, because there's a start point and there's an end point and there's ups and there's downs and all this kind of stuff, you know. So um, I think it's a good analogy to use. Um, so in terms of just reading, and I know Stephen kind of will mention some of this as well, but there's, there's no harm in re-emphasizing it. And I'm sure your teachers are kind of drawing your attention to some sources as well. Um, so I have, I've, I've compiled some reading sources, some kind of YouTube challenge channel sources, some podcast kind of sources. What I mean by sources, these might be sources to generate ideas, but they also might be good sources to be able to reference things. So you might see something in a report by, for instance, the OECD, so the organize. Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Okay, um, so like you know, they, they produce, for instance, just as an example, they produce really good reports around Ireland, around uh, COVID, around education, around health, around loads of different things, fiscal policy. So it's worth poking around their their website to see what kind of reports they have. They're also a good source for data. So as well as that, I, I've done up a list of kind of data sources, international Irish space that, that will circulate as well. I haven't put the list here because there's no point in going through them all here in, in our limited time. These are just some examples, you know. So what's the point of these? What's the point of looking at these websites? What's the point of drawing your attention to these? It's the idea generation. So to try and get an angle on your, your individual line of inquiry. Um, but also, you know, to, to kind of to to uh, to include within your study as well. There might be some statistics or there might be some line in the in, in our government report, for instance, that says this is important. So, you know, um, the, the, the pop payment unemployment, but, you know, it was very important because of X, Y and Z. And you might think, oh, that 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 sentence suits what I want to talk about in my research study. So, you know, the, just have a look around them in terms of um, in those kind of things. It, Again, go back to that frustration idea. It, it is time consuming. You know, that's the thing in terms of research. It, it can be time consuming in, in terms of going around websites, in terms of looking for reports, reading through reports and things like that. Um, some of the stuff you read, maybe even in fact, a lot of the stuff you might read in doing that process, you may not use in terms of the research study. A lot of the stuff I read on a daily basis. Um, on, on, you know, in the hope that it will help inform my research. Some of it doesn't, you know, it, it's just, it, I don't see it as a loss. It's just, it's it's information that maybe I'll use in future. I can use for other parts of, in your case, in terms of maybe your leaving cert economics, in terms of your exam or things like that. So it's, it's um, uh, but but don't get discouraged. The point I'm trying to make is don't get discouraged. You know what I mean? In terms of that search, but but these are some useful resources in terms of, uh, in terms of that kind of process. So um, as well as that, I think I, I, I 
I mentioned a few minutes ago in terms of blogs, podcasts, those kind of things, even certain people on Twitter, like obviously in terms of Stephen, in terms of his articles and things like that. Do you want to keep an eye out for just and build up a, a database almost? What I try to do is try to be organized and build up a database of, of reports that I think might be relevant to my line of inquiry, my research, build up a database of of um, OECD data or OECD reports or government reports or, or or even if it's book chapters or newspaper articles or things like that, build up those resources for you because they'll prove really valuable when you're getting down to writing the thing, you know. Um, so just an example here, okay? So I'm just trying to keep on time here, okay? So this is one of the research topics that 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 um, I, you're faced with, and obviously you have to pick the individual line of inquiry, okay? So just if it was me, okay? I'm just the, the big disclaimer here, health warning is, is this? I just looked at it. I've, Nothing to do with this. I, this is the one yesterday was the first time I saw this particular research topic. Um, but I just sat down and I kind of thought, right, if this was me and I looked at this kind of topic, where would I start? You know, where would I start? And these are the kinds of questions I would ask myself when I look at this kind of research topic. OK, and this these questions could be applied to virtually any research topic, not just the leaving cert kind of ones. But, you know, like you could suggest these to any any student engaging in research. OK. But, these are particularly relevant, obviously, with the um, uh, with the given research topic here. So I looked at it and kind of thought, OK, questions that come to my mind that that might be of value to you, you know, to get you thinking around this way. What were the so it mentions here, you can read it there in terms of, you know, discussing and evaluating the effectiveness of Irish government economic interventions during the pandemic. OK, um, and I think, OK, what, what were the economic interventions? So there were lots of interventions. What were the economic interventions? The language used as economic interventions. OK, so what were they? The one that obviously comes to most mind, I suppose, is, is the pop to pandemic unemployment payment. You know, so that's one. There were others, so not get you thinking around it. How do we evaluate them? How do we evaluate those things? It asks you from an individual and business decision. So how do we evaluate them? Keeping in mind the economic kind of concepts. So do we evaluate it from an efficiency viewpoint, equity viewpoint, a kind of market failure viewpoint, maybe even public health viewpoint, because that might have economic connotations as well or implications. You know, so and that kind of leads me to my third question there. What economic concepts can I touch upon when I look at this? Is it related to demand and supply stimulating the economy? You know, so they're just again, I'm just kind of brainstorming it here in these kind of sense. And, and if I was doing this, I'd have a pen and paper. If I was doing this myself, I'd have a pen and paper to write down some of the ideas that I had around it. Next question in terms of feasibility, if I think of an idea around, do I have access to discuss and evaluate these interventions? So if I want to pick away a manner in which to evaluate these, can I get data? Do the CSOs so the Central Statistics Organization, do they have statistics that I could look at to help evaluate these interventions? I'm sure they do. So, you know, you have to go digging for those kind of things and, and think about it in that way. The other line I would think in terms of this is how do they compare internationally? You're asked to evaluate something, you know, you're discussing, evaluate some kind of policy, a, a Irish policy. But it's always useful to compare it or make it relative to internationally. So, you know, if you're talking about, uh, you know, oh, Ireland did this, this and this, and these were the outcomes. How does it compare internationally? Is it good? Is it bad? You know, you don't have to be exhaustive, but you could pick one or two other countries, a European country, maybe America or something like that, just to compare it briefly. I know I know your world limit is relatively tight and there's kind of study, but, you know, just to compare it um, in some kind of fashion and in, in to, to provide that rounded kind of evaluation of something. And, and again, that's not just for this. I, I've said this to PhD students when they present in terms of their some of their research and they put up something about Ireland and the question is how does it compare, you know, if you want to give some kind of relativity to it or comparison to it, how does it compare internationally? So they're just some of the questions that, that would generate in my head. I'm sure you'd have your own questions that would generate, your teachers might have, you know, when you look at the, you know, a statement like that, but there are some of the things that just come into my head, okay? When I'm, if I was trying to develop a research line around something like that with a given type of topic, you know. Uh, just some extra tips and I'll finish on this because I know Stephen's going to come in then. Um, uh, just so and I'll go through these quite quickly, OK? Um, I know these are highlighting the, the, the examinations guidelines and stuff like that that you have as well. So just some pitfalls. And again, think these aren't just isolated to you. So, that, you know, these are things that, that will go with you through life in terms of if you're doing any writing or any research or anything like that. Plagiarism. Just, you know, it, it's something people look out for. Plagiarism is basically just copying and pasting, you know, stuff from, from websites or reports or things like that. It's really important to cite properly, you know, not doing so is a, is a big no-no, you know, in terms of in terms of from an ethical consideration, for just from from um, uh, 
uh, a robust research kind of uh, point of view. So just be very, very careful on that. Also be very careful with sources, you know. Um, what your cousin said on WhatsApp is not a good source. You know, what some random person says on Facebook is not a good source. Um, you need proper sourcing. What I mean by that is, you know, if you're going to say something in your study definitively about a government policy or about an economic intervention, try to find a good sourcer. The good sourcers will be, for instance, are the ones that, that like the list I'm going to send you, we're going to send you, like the OECD, the Central Statistics Organization in Ireland, the World Bank, the IMF. European Central Bank, these kind of groups, you know, and um, they're, they're they're the robust. I use that word robust. They're the proper kind of sources. OK, so just be careful in terms of that. Avoid a lot exaggerated language. So things like, you know, your project is, is, is you know, what we, in economic research. Anyway, we try to keep it, you know, what we call kind of quite scientific, you know, that here's the problem. Here's how I'm going to evaluate the problem. Here's what I find. Here's the conclusion from it. But what we'd like to avoid generally is exaggerated language like this is outrageous or this is this is crazy or, you know, um, this is disgraceful. Kind of leave that language to the politicians, really, you know, so. Um, so again, just be careful in terms of that when you're writing and when you're reading your own writing. An introduction is really, really, really important. An introduction. So you have to do an introduction in terms of your study and, and just it's the first thing people read. If, if someone someone's going to be grading this, you know. The introduction it sounds very simple now, you know, it's the first thing they're going to read. It's the first impression that they get when they read something. So it's it's really important. Please spend time in your introduction. Don't think you can do it like in half an hour or something like that, because it's 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 your opening shot. You know, it's your opening shot in terms of in terms of your research study. So please spend time laying out, you know, what you're going to do and how you're going to do it in terms of your research study. It doesn't have to be long, just but just please spend time in terms of making sure the introduction tells the reader what to expect and what you're doing and why you're doing it. You know, so that it's just just spend time in it, please, and reread it and reread it. The last thing I'll say to you now, and I'll finish up then, Stephen and Sarah, is um, knowing the difference between describing data and interpreting. And this is like drawing another kind of word of describe of, of you know, concluding something. So you might get some data, right? And you might describe, oh, you know, that the government, when they brought in the, the pandemic unemployment payment, um, this is what happened. You know, you're describing what happened. But the next step, the really key next step I find for a good project is interpret the data in terms of what were the implications of what they did? What were the outcomes of what they did? You know, not just describing what happened, but describing the outcomes of what happened or the potential outcomes of what happened, you know, from an economic kind of viewpoint. It's that little extra step that between describing data and interpreting data, and it can make the difference between a kind of decent project and a really good project, I find, in terms of, again, just my own research or, or even um, research from students in college and stuff like that. So just just a couple of, as I said, kind of last tips that, that I want to just really want to get out there. OK, um, so uh, I'll pass you over to Stephen now and I'm going to be quiet. I think is Stephen going to share his screen. You want to go at your own pace there, Stephen, and I'll stop sharing. Thanks, Dara. Um, can everyone hear me? Yep, very good. OK, so let me start with this. And I will talk about this for the next 20 minutes or so. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is Stephen Kinsla. I'm a professor in the economics department at the Kemi Business School. Uh, like Dara, I um, do research on the Irish economy. Um, I write for a number of um, publications, but uh, my main job really is is writing books and, and, and research papers. Um, and I'm, I'm really excited to, to talk with you all today. There is a question box in the top right hand corner of your screen. So if you have any questions to uh, give us, we'll do our best to answer them um, at, at the end of this uh, talk. So uh, just building on what Dara uh, um, uh, pointed out so so brilliantly, uh, the truth about it is that any of the research topics or research themes is going to have roughly the same structured answer. Um, and what I mean by that is uh, you're going to end up with roughly the same structure in terms of introduction, methods, data, et cetera, um, regardless of whatever line of inquiry you choose. This is very important because from a marking perspective, as somebody who grades papers all the time, like Dara and all of my colleagues in the economics department, a lot of the time you're looking for ways to give students marks. And um, 
the, uh, as we'll show in a little minute, um, the uh, people who have de developed the research study um, have uh, gone out of their way, I think, to really make it uh, uh, clear as to how to do really well in this um, uh, in this study. So uh, here we have uh, another one of the topics. So candidates are required to pursue an individual line of inquiry, discussing and evaluating the positive or negative implications presented by the COVID-19 pandemic on the Irish economy at a national level. So if you break that down, an individual line of inquiry, discussing and evaluating positive or negative implications presented by the pandemic on the Irish economy at a national level. So you're not going to talk about the economy of Limerick or the economy of the United Kingdom or something like that. You're going to focus on the Irish economy. OK, so uh, break down the, the, the topic. You've got to focus on your audience. So an individual or business, government or policymakers. And uh, like Dara said, start by thinking about research questions, your line of inquiry. Um, how uh, how do these things interrelate? Maybe you're interested in the effects on um, uh, the consumption part of the economy or investment or government spending. There there are positive and negative implications uh, uh, for for um, the COVID pandemic. Some people had a very very hard pandemic, and other people um, did quite well. They were able to save uh, a lot and and. Um, uh, there, there are different effects depending on uh, what kind of worker you are. A worker in a multinational uh, who is able to work from home in a spare room um, did far better um, than a worker who was uh, working in the creative industries and had their uh, uh, businesses taken away from them effectively by the pandemic. So you've got to identify the parts of the question and how they interrelate. And uh, this is really important. How is the topic part of a larger system? Um, you're talking about the Irish economy, you're talking about macroeconomics. Macroeconomics is the study of the whole, the big sort of parts of the economy and how they relate to one another. Um, so it's a very, very important point. Uh, trace the topic's development through time. So the, obviously the pandemic didn't exist as a concept in everyone's mind in January of 2020. Um, but you do have monthly data and quarterly data and now annual data on how this pandemic um, uh, evolved. And you also have a way to compare it internationally. And so while we are talking about the Irish economy, it is important that you break it down and compare it to, let's say, the European counterparts um, that it might have. Um, and so identify its characteristics and the categories that include it. So what kind of thing is your topic? So you have to both discuss and evaluate something. So it's an evaluation in some sense, which means something was bigger, something was smaller, something was better, something was worse, costs were greater than benefits and so forth. And then determine it, its value. So what value does this reflect? What does it disagree with? Um, let's say you come out with a finding that says COVID-19 uh, the pandemic was amazing and everything was perfect. Well, are there findings that in some way uh, disagree with that? Um, or is there a set of literature that says, actually, the pandemic was a really bad thing for millions of people. So maybe your finding is in, a, in isolation, in some sense, just a case study. And in the end, is it useful? Can it overcome the so what question that the reader will be asking? Like, so what? When the reading, like Dara made the very important point about introductions. So what is the question you have to answer in your introduction? So when you're talking about a line of inquiry, what I'd love everyone to do as they've got that pencil and paper out is literally break it down. Uh, uh, and I would I would do this with your teachers in class. Um, break down the first sentence of your uh, research study. I am studying X. I'm studying the implications on the Irish economy of COVID-19 because I want to find out what the implications of it were for the Irish economy over a two-year period in order to evaluate the implications of uh, the pandemic over the last two-year period, okay? Step three there is really important. It is, the, it is the first sentence of your piece. It establishes the through line of your inquiry. It says, I'm studying something. I want to find out about it in order to say something uh, concrete. It's, it establishes your claim to the reader's interests and it really gets their um, uh, 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 work, uh, it gets your work into their minds very quickly. Get straight to the question and you're halfway there. Don't waste, don't waste time, don't faff about. Uh, the reader, the reader, if your implied reader is a policymaker um, or someone like that, they know the Irish economy has five million people in it. Just get stuck in. Okay. Don't bury the lead. Don't emphasize, don't fail to emphasize the most important part of your story. Absolutely vital, folks. Just don't do that. 
Okay. It's very important to think in terms of economic models applied to data. When I say an economic model, you should understand what I mean. You've seen things like supply and demand, monopoly, oligopoly, and more. Um, you might not have seen um, integrated ecological and economic models, like I'm showing Kate Raworth's donut economics there. Um, that's a that's a model. It's a very, very complicated model. There's a lot going on in terms of, you know, you can see there's like everything from energy and water to gender and peace and everything else. Um, there's a lot going on there, but that's a perfect example in my mind of like what a model applied to a data might be. You might look at this and say, oh, well, you know, um, the pandemic in a certain sense was caused by uh, uh, climate change and biodiversity loss and and, uh, and and so forth. OK, so this is a an important uh, an important way of thinking. And if you you can read a book or you can look at our lectures on YouTube. Um, here's another way of thinking about it. You could start from the fundamental macroeconomic accounting identity. So if you haven't studied this yet, um, don't worry, you will uh, have no doubt um, uh, that all of your teachers will be doing this. Um, so output uh, is the sum of consumption, investment, government expenditure, exports and minus imports. OK, so C plus I plus G plus X minus M gives Y, which is output or income or expenditure. And if you haven't done this before, don't worry. Like I said, you will. You'll probably end up chanting it. So the charts here on the right hand side of the screen, what are you looking at? You're looking at this. This is actually from the government's summary economic statement. This dark green, this is C. So you can see what happened to consumption over time. Consumption fell uh, rapidly. Um, uh, as a percentage of total domestic demand, which is C plus I plus G. You can see C just fell right down. Construction activity fell. Government consumption went up. The government started buying stuff pretty much immediately in, in, in 2020. And then you can see it shot up in uh, quarter three of 2020 as the economy slightly reopened again, uh, uh, if you remember, and then it collapsed back down again. Um, into quarter one of 2021. So you can see what happened there in terms of the domestic part of the economy and then the foreign part of the economy. You can see that exports and imports added together, they just rose pretty much throughout the period. Um, but why? Because of our the structure of our economy. Our economy is, the export part of our economy is ICT, um, it's it's pharma, um, it, it's it's food-based. So the, the export part of our economy is an extraordinarily powerful part of it. Um, and you can see that it's just it, it just rose uh, rapidly while the domestic economy shrank rapidly, be it being C plus I plus G. You can see there at the bottom, this is in percentage changes from the year before. You can see what happened here to per personal consumption in 2021. It shot up nearly 7%. Seven, 7%. Government consumption shot up 2%. Investment, 4%. Exports, 16%. Modified imports, 11%. And so you can see these very, very large and spring back effects coming from the economy. So that's another way of thinking about it. And I would uh, suggest that thinking about it from a national economy perspective, you should be using data like that. And we'll, we're gonna send these slides out to you after, after this. Um, and what you'll, what you'll see is in the notes um, of these slides, you'll see the sources for all these data points. And so I hope that you'll find those useful as you uh, go about um, building your own work. OK, so you're going to need to answer data to answer your question. So you've got this model, you've got the line of inquiry, you've got this data that, or this uh, model. Now you're going to need some data to answer your question. You've got to compare the data to the theory. Here are some data uh, points um, on COVID-19. Dara already mentioned the OECD. He mentioned the World Health Organization, the Central Statistics Office. Um, there's a bunch of other ones. Here are um, lots and lots and lots of uh, uh, resources for you, um, particularly on um, uh, the, the, um, the macroeconomic um, um, side of things. There's also a very good paper by the National Economic and Social Council, which is the last uh, line there, on delivering on sustainable development, how to actually uh, deliver on uh, sustainable development as mentioned in last year's um, research paper, um, but it's equally um, valid today. And the National Economic and Social Council, NESC, are a font of extremely good research and research reports that you can learn a lot from. Now, writing. Um, uh, you There are explicit marks for writing well. Uh, pro tip, everyone, purchase a copy of Deirdre McCluskey's Economical Writing. Purchase multiple copies. Leave them around your house. 
Um, I don't, I'm not sponsored by Georgia McCluskey and uh, 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 I'm just a huge fan of her work. Um, if you click uh, this link here, this will take you to my summary of this book's uh, key ideas. Um, it's just a page, just a handout for everybody uh, uh, there. And that's very, very important. Um, uh, th that's very important um, for everyone. The biggest difference between a good draft and a poor draft is your, a good writing and a poor writing is your approach to uh, the first draft. The first draft is literally the first thing. It's You have total permission to make it as crappy as you like, throw in any ideas you like. The last draft, the thing that you submit has to be amazing. The difference between the two will determine the mark that you get. So really good writing. Um, it just sees the first draft as a sketch and then moves forward toward a complete um, draft. Make sure you're producing multiple drafts. Don't be lobbing in something in the last minute. It's a very important part of your economics grade. Um, so pretty pleased with sugar on top. Um, think of uh, think of Deirdre's 35 rules uh, for clear and persuasive writing, and it will do a massive. Uh, uh, um, it will make a massive difference to your work. This is the this is actually the marking scheme, and if you look at the marking scheme, the marking scheme sort of pulls you through this. Um, uh, uh, structure. So if you take um, if you take the introduction, okay, the introduction, the line of inquiry, state the line of inquiry clearly. I am studying X in order to find out Y because Z, right? So there you go. That's an excellent example of a line of inquiry. Nine to ten marks, easy. Evidence of data. You've got the data, the macroeconomic data, for example, and for the country, or you might have data on the pulp, you might have uh, and the other parts. Then application and analysis. How are you going to apply the data to the various points? Interpreting and evaluating it. Uh, Dara already talked about this. There's a big difference between saying the line went down and then saying why the line went down. There's a big difference and make sure you understand the two. Uh, articulate different arguments as to what happened and why. Show the reader that you understand there's judgment. Um, analyze some data. Actually show the data that it's, that it's well done. And you can see here, there's a conclusion. So informed conclusion, very clearly argued. You can reflect on it. So, so I would I would literally have um, these section, these literal sections there. Um, how do you feel about this? What did you gain from it? And here you can see communication, presentation, and overall coherence. There are 15 marks going. That's extraordinary. So 15 marks just going for, for structure, coherence, good writing, uh, and decent content. And so if you think about it, Use the marking scheme to guide the structure and then use your own line of inquiry to fill the content. That's a very, very good, effective procedure to get a good mark in this um, uh, area. So what's the summary? Economic research is fascinating. It's very important. It couldn't be more important. There's five million people in this country. Over a million and a half of them were supported by the government during, to, during the last year. It's an extraordinary story and you've lived through an extraordinary time. Um, uh, and uh, to be honest, I envy you uh, learning research in this uh, moment because you have such a dramatic story uh, to learn from. So make sure you use um, economical writing. And if you if you want uh, the craft of research, which is another excellent book to uh, structure your answer. And if you make it your answer, your line of inquiry, uh, using the pen and paper that Dara talked about, you'll be absolutely fine. Um, so let me stop there and uh, stop sharing my screen. And I, if, if possible, we might talk a little bit about uh, any questions and answers uh, that you might have in the last sort of 20 minutes of this, um, of this uh, um, uh, webinar. So what you should see is in, um, in the question uh, for, so the chat has been turned on. So you can ask a question uh, here if you have any. Uh, um, Please feel free, uh, or you can put your hand up, and we'll uh, we'll come to you um, as uh, as uh, necessary. So, um, if you like, uh, that's fine. Uh, d while people are are coming up with questions, Dara, have you got anything to add in terms of what we might um, what we might uh, uh, bring to the table here? Uh, yeah, look. I, I... It's, I just re-emphasize, to be honest, I just think it, that, that that research process, you know, in terms of it, it's not a linear kind of thing, it's not a straight line, you know what I mean, that you, you it goes 
up, it goes down, you know what I mean? But um, just to re-emphasize that, because it can be relative to other ways of learning, other things that you'll do, I think it can um, it can it can be very different and, and can be somewhat frustrating and stressful in that kind of sense, but it can be very rewarding. Like I think Stephen mentioned there, you know, it's it's it is interesting. We're biased, obviously, because we kind of, it's part of our living to do. But, um, yeah. you know, we, we kind of self-selected into it in a way. But it, it is, you know, it is interesting to do in that sense. But um, the, the other thing I would just emphasize, as Stephen said, is just, you know, be your own editor, you know, as in like when you write something, read it read it again get someone else to read it you know it just anyone Absolutely. doesn't make sense you know it doesn't make sense i i'd often my my wife is a nurse but i would i would read her thing you know i'd say can you read that just the introduction if it is does that make any sense it's like the elevator pitch you know can you can you explain it does does it make sense to to um um somebody not from an economic background even you know so even just things like that can help the process along i think um so you know it's 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 that kind of thing i think there's a question in there stephen there's a couple of questions coming in there oh very very good uh, so here's one from patrick o'shea um can i focus on say impact on unemployment generally rather than break it down to a particular industry i mean i think for the ones that we for the two topics that uh, dara and i uh, looked at patrick um i would say you should probably keep it at unemployment at the national level rather than breaking it down because it specifically asks you to look at the implications for the irish economy so i would keep it like that Olga says, when it says positive or negative implications in topic one, Dara, I'll give this one to you. When it says positive or negative implications in topic one, are they choosing one or the other? Oh, in terms of the outline of the research topic, oh God, the, sh the short answer is theirs. I don't know in terms of like the, from, the, from the perspective in terms of whether they drafted it, but um, I, if it was me, I would look at both, to be honest, in terms of positive, negative. I, I, I would try to give a rounded kind of answer in terms of those kind of things, because there's going to, if you're, as Steve mentioned, when you're evaluating something, if you're just focusing kind of always on the positives of something or one aspect or one side of, the, you know, one side of the ledger as such, you know, it, it, it doesn't seem like a complete argument. So I would always try to round it off, like, you know, in terms of um, positive and negative in terms of to give it a more rounded type of evaluation, essentially, because you know, even our research, we, we, you know, we present certain research, but then we present the limitations of the research, which is to give it that roundedness, you know, so, you know, so positive, negative, I would, I would, I would encompass both, to be honest, in terms of to give it a, anything, any policy, um, a decent evaluation, you know, rather than a, hmm. rather than a propaganda piece, I suppose, if it was a, just the positives, you know. Yeah, of course. I mean, it, it, the reality is in the macro, macro economy, there are, there's never a, a fully negative effect. You know, um, so so like I, I mentioned just in my very brief talk that there there were there are people who have done very well from COVID. They've been allowed to forced to save, in fact. So the savings rate has really gone up. And so lots of people have more money saved um, and they've been able to uh, spend more time with their kids. And, and um, they, they've they've done um, they, they you know, they, they've done uh, they've done relatively well relative to people who, who who have had a much much harder time so you know that there are positive and negative um Im implications for that for example uh, if you look at um um uh, greenhouse gas emissions uh, they fell um last year i think they fell by seven percent you know um, so here's another one uh, uh from carmel fitzpatrick uh, use of positive or negative in topic one does this only oh because this is kind of the same question so i i, I would i feel like uh, myself and dara would, would, would both do both um should you, uh, so Laura Doyle says, uh, suggestions on setting aims for the project? Dara, thoughts on this? Yeah, just thinking about there in terms of suggestion aims, like the aims, I suppose, are related to the assessment side in a way, you know, to bring your objectives, yeah. there's a couple of objectives, I suppose, you know, as one is for the students to get a good grade and, and I suppose maybe another sub, sub objective is to enjoy the process as they go along, like in terms of in terms of aims, if you mean in terms of um, what I would always try to do with a, with a research project, it, it's up to the individual student and the individual class maybe as well. It's things even like I think like project management, things like Gantt charts can help. So you, ha you have an endpoint. You know the date in terms of endpoint. And to work back from that, in terms of what are the deliverables, I know it sounds very management -y now, but what are the deliverables that you would expect two weeks out, a week out, three weeks out? You know, roughly, they might change give or take, you know what I mean? But that's the way I would try to develop a research project or manage a research project. In terms of aims, yeah, look, look the, the aim would depend on your objective in terms of, you know, you want to go great, you want to enjoy the process as you go along and that kind of stuff. So in terms of you want to 
in terms of aim for a really good grade, I think some of the stuff that we said will hopefully help. But you can see in terms of the guidance that the department and Steve kind of highlight in terms of the grading, the things that are necessary, you know, that are, that are rewarded. There are certain weightings and certain things. So, you know, that, that they can help guide it as well. If you mean in terms of aims, I suppose, in terms of project management, yeah, I, I would I would always kind of start a project in terms of I would try to have a deadline for something, you know, a deadline focuses the mind and work backwards from that. And not necessarily a Gantt chart, even something rough that you have in terms of, okay, two weeks out, this is what we want to have done. Four weeks out, this is what we want to have done. And and because we do that as well with our master's students, you know, they have a certain deadline for a thesis, for instance, to submit. So, you know, we, we make them do a Gantt chart um, a couple of months out to, to to work backwards basically from that target essentially. So um I don't know if that helps hopefully. Um there's a couple more coming yeah, in there. Perfect. Yeah indeed. Uh so Jer uh, Mulvey asks, should you focus on one government intervention or several? Uh classic uh, go classic answer uh, here, Jer, uh, it depends. So for example, I mean if you're if you're if you're looking at um you know overall government spending or something, you could you could look at the the vast increase in G, for example, if you're looking at topic two. But if you're uh if you if you're if if the line of inquiry pulls you down into let's say you want to look at the the TWSS and the EWSS. Well, you know, at that point, you're gonna, you're going to, you're going to get uh, fairly negative. Uh, Patrick says, "Can I bring in the concept of sustainability this this year?" I believe you can. I mean, I think there's. I just, I just gave a very simple example there, um, as you know, emissions went down. Uh, I presume you're talking about environmental sustainability there. Um, Okay, this one for you, Dara. Aidan Douglas, a lot of my students wish to focus on the impact of COVID-19 on a particular industry or business. If they give the general outline of the overall impact to the broader economy and link that to how it's impact on a specific industry, do you believe that meets the brief? I, I might go back up, Steve, actually. Sorry, nothing down, but there was oh, yeah? one in the middle area from David Maher in terms of your opinion. Oh, sorry. Because um, th that's just, just one that caught my eye there. I know in, in the brief, it talks about, you know, do, qualitative research and that which would fit in terms of the primary research kind of side of you. All I can say is my view and my experience, OK, different people might have different opinions, this, but my opinion would be is that there are so many good secondary sources of data out there, as Stephen has mentioned, as we, as we, we, we will send you in terms of resources. Personally, my opinion would be, I'm not saying I'm right but all the time, but you know that, that my personal opinion would be to try and avoid primary research from the point of view of data collection is really hard, is really difficult. Your research is then dependent on the goodwill of people in terms of data collection. Um, it's it, it just makes things more difficult. That's, I'm not trying, you know, people might want to do it and have a really strong opinion around it, but it does complicate just to put the proviso I suppose in terms of the caveat there the asterisk there it does in my opinion kind of complicate things just in terms of trying to gather data and being at the as I said at the whim in terms of goodwill and all that kind of stuff I don't know Stephen might have a different opinion but I just think there's so many good secondary sources of data out there that they provide such a rich avenue for um, analysis. So Stephen might have a different viewpoint in terms of that kind of side of things. But my, my, I, I don't actually. I mean, my 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 view to is very similar. Very similar. Um, unless you have like, I mean, unless like Pascal Donahue is your is your is on is on your WhatsApp group or something. I I wouldn't do it. I mean, the, the, you've got ten weeks. Um, in order to do it properly, you need to set up a research study. You need to devise it properly. You need to go get get ethical consent. Um, you need to go out, get the data, come back. I mean, it, it, it's a, it's it's going to be quite tr it's going to be quite tricky, I think, um, to do that to do a really high quality um, um, piece. You know, again, there's a big asterisk there, like like <laughs> unless you get a one on one meeting with you know the Taoiseach or something. Um, uh, no, I, I yeah I I wouldn't. Um, okay, Aiden asks uh, they want to spoke, focus on a particular industry. Uh, uh, Dara, any thoughts on that? Yeah, so if they give the general outline. I'll just read it here again. Sorry, to give the general outline of the overall broader and link that's how it impacts this injury. Um, again, yeah, from my personal opinion, like when I look at it, some of the questions I generated when I saw the the brief or the 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 blurb, you know, in terms of the the studies, the the types of questions I would ask myself is okay, yeah, does it, you know, does it impact in a particular, uh, uh, does it impact generally, and then zoning in, you know, from that general to the specific, I, that that would be fine for me in terms of that. That's probably a way I would approach it, to be honest, personally as well. You know, in terms of, 
I know you're saying, do you, do you believe it, it meets the brief? All I can give, I suppose, is in terms of my belief and my opinion. And that's how I would interpret it as well. You know what I mean? That kind of approach, that, that's that's exactly how I would interpret it as well. Yeah, same, um, same. I'm just a little conscious of time, Dara. I, uh, I, I won't be grading this, but just isn't that exactly how I would approach it? That's that's all I can yeah, tell exactly. you, you know? Exactly. Uh, so Emer says, um, can, in topic two, can you focus on one specific business decision or do you need multiple? For example, I want to focus on wage inflation only rather than other decisions. I mean, I think you want to really establish your line of inquiry very strongly there, Emer. Like and, and when you say one uh, specific business decision, if, if you could give us a bit more clarity in the comments, that'd be great. Um, moving on to George now, because we only have about five minutes left. Um, should I link the introduction and the conclusion? Uh, how do I link the body in the, of the research to I mean, yes is the is the answer, but maybe Dara, do you have a sense of, a sense of how George can link the body of the body and the research to the introduction? Yeah, but, yeah, because like your introduction, you're laying out, you know, what you want to do and why you want to do it, you know, and so like the the first line basically of your conclusion would would almost be a summary of the introduction, I and mean, you know, in terms of this was the problem that I identified, and this is this is what I now found. I'm updating you in terms of this is what I now found. So you're linking in that way to the introduction to the problem at hand in the first place or the, the task you were given in the first place, you know. So you're outlining the task, how you're going to do it in the introduction, giving the reader the sense of what's to come. And, and then the body is you know, going through what you do, the data you collect, what you find, interpreting what you find. And then the next the conclusion is kind of summarizing that. But, but at the start of the conclusion, you have to lay it out again to the reader very briefly. You're not talking pages and pages here but you want to lay out okay this is this is this is the problem or this was the task at hand this is what we found and this is what we conclude and what we draw from what we found so absolutely in terms of the linkage you, you know that that it flows in that way a part of that like I said I, I say this students all the time try to be your own editor read it read it again change it a little bit read it again it's time consuming it's annoying but it's a big part of it, and it can mean so much at the margin in terms of marks, you spotting things and, and, and seeing if it flows and seeing how Absolutely. things look like that uh, in terms Absolutely. of reading. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so Emer comes back and says, uh, so she was asking about, uh, she woke, focusing on wage inflation. Uh, so the, looking at the impact of the EWSS on wage inflation. So uh, the question I would have there, Emer, is, and that's a really, really interesting idea. The question is, I, I would have there is, the, is, do you have the data? Uh, I, I'm not aware that that data exists um, just yet, um, but but if it, if it does exist, um, I think you'll you'll have a fascinating study. So um, Jenny says, how much time do we have? By the way, uh, Tobiko. Um, so how much how important is it to relate to the topic? Uh, this is Jenny. Example. Um, Topic two states government intervention and individual behavior or, or business decisions. Does this mean you must link an intervention to a specific business decision rather than the economy as a whole? Would that be topic one? Um, so here, I believe, uh, so we've got three minutes left apparently. Um, here, I believe what you want to do is you want to set your level of interpretation correctly. So when I say government intervention, I mean a policy that the government Im impacts on the economy. Yesterday, the National Development Plan came out. You know, if they start building a giant hospital in Limerick, that's a, an intervention. A lockdown, uh, which is the other one example given, that's definitely an intervention. That pop is, is an intervention um, and, and so forth. Um, so yeah, finding it difficult to link the research areas students want to follow to the specific topic. I understand where you're coming from, Jenny. I really, really do. Um, I think the the issue is to to define the level at which you are interpreting um, the question. Dara, do you have any more thoughts on that? Um, no, no. I think no. That's okay. I think if we even get to the couple more questions in the yeah, yeah, fair. Time, if we can. Uh, no, no, that's good. We've got like two minutes left. So Daniel, uh, uh, should we sort cite sources beside the information taken or would you advise putting a bibliography at the end? Dara, what do you think? Uh, I would always suggest if you cite your, like the Harvard kind of style referencing, basically that you put the the short citation. So if it's you're making a point that, you, that you're referring to something Stephen wrote in an article, Kinsella 2021 beside it, and then further down the bibliography or fuller bibliography, you're given the the, the, the broader, the more comprehensive uh, uh, reference to it with potentially the link to it, the article and stuff like that. Like the point of citations on that is that the reader is able to read, know where you got your sources and be able to find those sources basically. Um, uh, so so that double, double basically, you're citing in text in, in the shorthand way, the Harvard style, and then you're putting the broader references in the bibliography at the end. Then, then the reader has no doubt in terms of 
where you're getting sources and how you've developed your ideas uh, using those sources. So we're coming to the end. We have, a, we have a precisely one minute left. Uh, so uh, Fiona says the aims are supposed to, to be linked to the learning outcomes, the economic specification. OK, um, so so that's very good. So, yeah, Sonia, said, I was just about to say Sonia says there there, there must be a bibliography. Um, so, yeah, I would I would um, if you just Google cite it right, uh, we'll actually put it in. The, in we're just going to send you guys all an email with the slides and the, the, the various resources. Uh, uh, Luca asks, um, which topic would you choose if you were a student? <laughs> um, yeah, good question. Good question. Um, um, yeah, I I, uh, I think I would probably pick topic two because it's more macro-y, I guess. But uh, that's just me. Yeah, I was kind of the same. That's why I kind of picked it as my example, to be honest. You know, I think in terms of, uh, was it two? Yeah, sorry, I, the specific one. Yeah. But the number, yeah, top two as well. But, top but two. Uh, you do you, Luca. You do you. Whatever you feel like. Uh, Whatever you feel like uh, in terms of your interests, go with that. That's the beautiful thing about research. You know, that's the beautiful thing about research. You get to do what you want. It's your line of inquiry. Um, so yeah, don't be uh, don't be guided by us on that particular um, topic. Um, yeah. The last yeah, one um, you can to the Zine. Yeah, please go for it. Tara, have we lost you? Hello. Have we lost Dara or have we lost me? No, he's frozen. He's frozen. OK, because I'm worried if I'm frozen. OK, that's fine. All right. Uh, look, we're, 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 we're out of time anyway, um, folks. So first off, uh, can I thank you all very much for your time and attention? Thank you very much to all the students who are doing this. Like I said, you are uh, you we, I, we you, you are uh, we're very envious of your um, the, the look that you have to be able to study economics at this important time. Thanks very much to your teachers um, for 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 doing all of this um, for you and preparing you for this. They're working very, very hard and uh, we appreciate how hard all the teachers are working. Thank you very much uh, to Tobika for for organizing uh, this seminar. Uh, um, and of course, uh, uh, we're we're just very grateful for uh, her time and her expertise. And um, we we can't uh, pass this over without acknowledging uh, the BST AI and Mairead, uh, um, who has been uh, uh, a great friend to both the Kemi Business School at the University of Limerick and, of course, to uh, yourselves. So thank you very much, uh, Mairead, for for all of your help um, down the years. Um, we look forward to working with you further in the future. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll all sign off now. Uh, like Tabika said, the, the recording and all the slides and everything else will be sent to you um, after this. So uh, I think um, it just, uh, uh, for myself and Dara, who's still frozen, <laughs> we, will, uh, we will say thank you very much and wish you all a good morning and um, best of luck in your future studies. So take care. Thanks very much. Thank you guys.